Let's go right to the five rules you need to follow in order to get a beautiful picture. Rule number one is posture and it is very, very important how clients or you hold hands on the picture, meaning you need to use relaxed postures. They need to be relaxed because when they're not, it will not look as good. Don't try to fit all 10 nails in each photo because, you know, photos like this, right, they look kind of weird when, you know, sometimes people just try to fit all of them for some reason. I mean, it's fine. If it's fine if some of the thumb will fall down from, uh, you know, the frame. If there will be just one hand on the photo, it's completely fine. And the focus should be on the nail because sometimes the picture look like, you know, the focus is on the hand or on the wrist or somewhere else. Let's look through some examples. The first one, I call it classic. Um, so this is, to me, this is really a classic posture. So we just put one hand on top of the other and I recommend to take close-ups when you're taking this picture, not go too far but really do a close-up, so mostly what we can see here are nails. And this is the perfect posture for hands that are not as pretty, because let's admit it, not all hands look very pretty. Um, so what I suggest to do is just a close-up with this position. Straight, so if a skin, if the hand of your client looks good, and also if she got straight fingers, which is not always like that, but it can easily seen if she holds her hand just straight, so this also works perfect. She just, you know, holds her hand like this and you take a photo. But what's important if you take a look at here, it's, it's relaxed. It's not just, you know, straight like this, right? It's just relaxed, but with the straight fingers. So when it's uh, relaxed, when it's natural, it looks much better. Holding some objects, because with some people it gets really frustrating and tricky to make them hold the fingers exactly the way you want them. So if you will give them some objects such as cup or apple or something else, it usually helps them to hold this, uh, you know, naturally to actually relax their hands and just hold it like it, it will look good. Some bad examples. Twisted fingers. Well, this is the picture of the hand and the foot, but I bet you've seen many examples of the same pictures with both hands. So they look kind of like this. Now let's admit that even though this picture obviously was taken probably in the professional studio, you need, I mean the quality of the work is good, but still it looks a bit confusing because you know the fingers are not relaxed, they kind of um, all in one point and we cannot really see all the beauty of this work. Another no is to crossing. So here we have a hand closing part of the foot and another on the background, right? So there's no focus on nails. You kind of get confused. Where's the foot? Where's, um, you know, the leg? Oh, and here's a short disclaimer. Like these pictures are just uh, examples of how photos should look. So I'm not in any way criticizing the actual work of these authors. Not at all. I'm just, you know, just giving examples of how the pictures can be better taken. And another one, I don't know, my friend calls uh, this posture holding invisible banana because this is how it looks. And here we have like uh, an attempt to fit all five fingers in one photo. But the thing is, if we will take more relaxed pose, posture, uh, it's okay if the thumb will be just on its side and we will not completely see this. And here we don't even have any design that we want to show, right? It's just the color. So if the hand will look more relaxed, it will look better. Now, do people ever hold their hands in the real life like this? I don't think so. So photos look beautiful when we, um, you know, put the hand in the position like it can actually be in real life. And my favorite one, octopus. And um, I'm sorry, I just, this is the only one I could find because not many people use it today. Uh, and it's, honestly, it's not about the nails, it's about the posture. So. For some reason, clients, I think this is the favorite posture of clients because uh, when they first come to me, I'm like, okay, now let's take a picture. And sometimes they're automatically put it like this. And I'm like, oh my God. So you kind of, you cannot even tell which finger is which, right? You're kind of confused in all this um, majority of fingers. They're all um, too close together. So, you know, octopus is the one I would never recommend. 
okay? No octopus postures. Rule number two, light. Good lighting is extremely important. As you probably uh, understood from my short test that we did, when the lighting is bad, the picture overall doesn't look as good. So what you can do, use at least two table lamps. So on my working table, I have one table lamp from the one side and another one from the other. So when they do the light, I don't have any shadows. And this is a very good tip because you can, uh, you know, put them on the both sides and take a beautiful picture in the center. Also, I recommend to use cold, uh, cold white bulbs, at least 60 watt. Because when you use warm white, uh, this gives this yellow look on the skin, on the fingers, and usually doesn't look as good. So cool white makes everything a little bit more bluish. But that's kind of what we need on the photos because usually at the end, it will look like it looks in the real life. Um, and natural light is the best one. So if you have an opportunity to actually take photos on the actual light, that's really cool. Now let's go right through some examples. So here you have not a very good lighting, right? Can you see that all the skin looks more like red, yellow, and there are many shadows from the right side. So bad lightning can truly spoil even the best artistic work. And so we say yes to cool white bulbs. So this is the picture taken just with a single uh, cool white table lamp. And you can see the background is actually part of the client. So it's pretty easy. Also, yes to natural light. So this is the picture by Sean Legend. Uh, I'm following him on Instagram and I recommend you to do the same. And most of his pictures are taken outside and it looks beautiful, right? And if we take a look at it, it's the nails in a jeans jacket and on the background we could see the part of the parking lot. So there's nothing, you know, hard to, to do this, but it looks good. And I know maybe you're not uh, as lucky like I am in Moscow when it's winter, we have uh, light outside maybe like from 10 to 4 or 5 p.m. And it's really hard to catch on it. But sometimes you don't even have to go outside. You can just uh, do it in front of the window. I made tons of pictures like that. But if it's summer, like now, you can actually go outside. And usually all the colors, they just beautiful on the natural sunlight. So this is something I also recommend you to do. Rule number three, background. Use solid color. This is simple. Uh, just take something that is one color and use it. You can buy a set of paper. You can use paper for wrapping gifts, crafts, and you can create your own collection of the backgrounds. Here is one example. Now take a look at this beautiful set, beautiful nails, right? And not a very sexy background. Well, obviously it was just a picture during the training. It was uh, probably in the goal was not to actually post it for advertising, but still, it, I mean, if you're a professional, like, for example, I am focused only on the shape of nails. I do not see everything that is um, on the background, but that's me. Clients are not like that. They see this table, they see this uh, OPI lamp full of uh, gooey dust stick on it, and they're like, oh no, I don't want to go there. And there's some magazine under, no way. So background matters. Uh, another example, which is not as bad, but still we have some blurry picture with a, like hobby probably uh, driving somewhere. So to me, it's not really matching uh, with these nails, right? Why not just take a picture if you are in the car, you know, near the steering wheel, near the window, just outside, you know, with some solid background will work just fine. And yes, to the matching background. So here you have a beautiful nude set and there's this fluffy stuff and some uh, background which works just fine. And another good option is just one color. I think if you don't have uh, special settings and you don't have idea, just use one color. And now let me give you examples of how, where you can get them. Uh, first of all, you need to go to some office supply or craft shop and you can buy plenty of different backgrounds. For example, now check out this one. This is my favorite. This is the glitter and on the other side it is light pink. 
And it might look a little bit different on the camera now, but this is actually the one we used for this picture. Remember the one you picked, number three, with the mint and pink nails? So this is the background that we used. So also, I bought a set of different paper. So this is like a soft paper for some children crafts. I just have, you know, all kinds of colors. And depending on the nails that we are doing, I just pick one and we take a picture in front of it. Right? It's not hard. It's just, I don't know, five dollars. Also have another fluffy textured uh, background. You may not see it, so you will have to believe me that it's fluffy. Um, and yeah, so just take a look at this. I have like three sets and it's more than enough to take most of the pictures. Also, I bought, um, I forgot the name, but it was in the US in some shop. It's like watercolor paper pad and they have eight different colors in it. So it's probably, it's just $2. I think it's for painting something like that. So you just open up and here we have this uh, pink marble background and we just take a picture of it. Here we have green, etc. Well, so there's some marble stuff. I'm not sure if you see it. So that's it. That's and there's so many uh, similar things. Just take a look. I'm sure in your country you have tons of, of them and they're not expensive. You just buy some variety and then you just have the selection. Also, I bought this, um, I think it was like $3 in TJ Maxx, this hollow um, case. And this is also a cool background. I mean, why not? And the same one is pink. Um, so you can, once you see that something uh, will work like a great background, why not use it? The bad idea for the background when there's just too much on the background and you are kind of confused, like where's the nails or is this the part of the background? So um, these kind of things, they do not have to be just solid. For example, I bought this uh, scarf, I, forgot, I think in it, somewhere. Um, maybe in, in Spain. So this is like ombre with one, two, well, with many colors. And I done so many pictures with it. You guys cannot even imagine. So what I do, I like, I need um, only blue color. So I folded it with this one. So now we have blue and dark purple. And then we like place, you know, the nails like this. So this gives you tons of ways, you know, to play with the um, color or you can put it like this. And this is just one scarf. So uh, maybe you have, I bet you all have some old clothes, some stuff you're not really using. For example, purse, like this, this kind of purse you will not wear every day, right? Only for some special occasion. And you might not see it, but it's like really goes beautiful here. So, I mean, just if your client holds it like this, come on, it's already a ready set of beautiful picture. And uh, so what you can do is to keep them in a special box or a section of your wardrobe. So I have a big box and I didn't take it with me today because it's just huge. There's too much, but I just took some of my favorite uh, stuff from there to show you guys. So uh, this ribbon, I got this one from delivery of the cakes. And I was like, hey, I don't have a red ribbon yet. And you know, you can also use it, just place it on the background or put it something like this. Because people always think that, oh, you need to have like a huge um, wardrobe for your models to put them on. No, like just pick all this kind of crazy backgrounds and use them. Now, here we go through the champagne. And by the way, this is an, uh, this uh, bow is from some gift I got and I also used it as the background for my picture. Okay, now I bought this bottle of champagne, uh, pink champagne in Italy and brought this empty bottle all the way from Italy for the sole reason to take, to have this beautiful background uh, for the chrome nails. And well, the truth is it's maybe not the perfect background to take pictures because you can actually, you know, it reflects everything. But I mean, it's kind of cool, right? It, it looks so beautiful on a picture. So this is kind of how I get all these um, ideas. And here's another one like this is the bag 
from the shoes, just a golden bag. But it looks so cool, right? With, with some nails that will have some slight golden accents. So now I encourage you to look at the world um, at the salon, at your clothes, at accessories in different eyes. And you don't have to buy new stuff a lot. You just, I'm sure you, ha you can find it among something that you already have. And probably you will not be throwing away some ribbons, you know, some stuff that might be useful. And craft shops and office depot will, will work just great for this one. Rule number four, now it's getting even more exciting, accessories. Rings, jewelry, fabric, any small medium objects, food, cupcakes, and all the sweet stuff, like I already said, work just perfect. Floor, walls, outside views, this is all can work as the perfect accessory. A dog, a ring, and a, and a bracelet, well, it probably requires too much stuff to have and some special equipment, but it can be rings. If you take a look at this photo, there's just some uh, black background, I think it's just uh, the pants that she's wearing, uh, a sweater and rings. It's not hard, but it, it looks great, right? Also, matching objects works perfect. So if you have a collection of some matching stuff, uh, like here, uh, the client's Apple Watch um, band matches the nails, just perfect. And if you take a look at your client, most times they choose the colors that they like. And the colors that they like, they usually have something on them, whether it's watch, uh, earrings, um, bag. And I have so many pictures taken with some client's stuff, whether it's a purse, um, you know, watch or something else, because most of the times they do have something matching and we don't even have to have all this variety. So first, take a look at your client, maybe you already have something on it. This is uh, an example of my picture with the rings. And now usually everybody has questions. Okay, so I need to have like bazillions of rings. Well, it's pretty simple. Now let's take a look at my collection of the rings. So here I have uh, this case and this is, I think like one fourth of my collection. And how much do you think I spent on all of this? Well, I think I have about three, three times uh, of the same ring. So we have here, you know, different colors, different styles here with the reindeer, with crystal, you know, all kinds of styles. And I don't even have white and black rings like the one I have on this picture and a bag. So all this together, it was 30 US dollars uh, for the, um, the actual box because I had to keep them somewhere. Uh, so these rings, they're cheap, they're made from like regular metal and their size is adjustable, meaning you don't have to have all, all this variety of sizes. For example, I have like a pretty large size of, of my fingers, but I still can fit it because it adjusts. So then you put all the rings that you think fit to this um, uh, style and take a photo and then put them off. That, that's pretty simple. And I got this idea when I visited House of Polish. This is the salon in, in LA. So they also have this beautiful set for the photos and they have all this amount of rings. I think they probably had all these fancy rings there, but I, I mean, come on, these rings on the pictures, they look great. And you know, they don't have to be silver or gold or something like that. So this is something, and I bought them on AliExpress. I think you have something similar, Aliexpress, Alibaba, so from China. They're pretty cheap and I mean, this good. And you can also get their bracelets if you want you know, to add something. And also, I, I don't have it with me now, but there was also a, a beautiful setting of bracelet and a ring, especially for Halloween. And it, and it was like for, I don't know, 20 US cents. So this is how you can get accessories. And also I showed you the bottle of champagne and other stuff. So candles, cups, I don't know, anything around you can work as this accessory. And sometimes all you need to do is just look around. If you have uh, some fruits in your salons, they also can work just fine. I mean, anything. Flowers, they usually look beautiful. And you know what? Many times I use the, not the real flowers, but like the fake flowers and leaves. Some of them look pretty good on the pictures, even though they're fake. 
Follow the link in the description box to learn the fifth rule of creating a beautiful photo and watch the full version of Instagram Tips for Nail Technicians webinar. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and it was helpful, please do not forget to hit like. See you in my next video. Bye-bye!